10. I'll call the meet to order. This time it's at 12 12. Now, what I like to do is call Jack, you. Can you guys hear me? Answer here. Go ahead. Yeah, you're talking. We're good. Yep. Okay. I'll call okay. your names. Please answer here after I uh, call your names, please. Tim Bernica. Here. Allison Bryan. Here. Liz Fraser. Todd Goff. Here. Jeff Hartwell. Here. John McMahon. Here. Jackie Lorenzo. Everyone's here. I'd like to turn the meeting over now to Ted, please. I guess first, um, you know, I don't know if Jackie you want to introduce John or welcome, John. Uh, yeah, I think I did before. Welcome, John. <laughs> Thanks, oh, man. Oh, um, and also, I want to thank Abigail for her 10 years. So she started the cookie, um, the cookie tradition. So, John, I think you're in charge of the cookies now. Okay, yeah, I got to. Uh, I need some notes on that, but uh, it sounds good. Okay. Um, yeah, we eat well. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, just to, I'm going to do it's the first meeting after the election, so uh, it's time to reorganize. So I'll be asking for nominations for chair, vice chair, and secretary to call for vote. So, looking for a nomination for the for a chairman. I nominate Jackie Lorenzo. Any other nominations? So I just need, I need a second on that. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that's going to be five zip uh, without with Jack abstaining. Uh, nomination for vice chair. I'll nominate Tim Bernita. Any other nominations? Anyone for a second? I'll second I'll that. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five, five nothing with Tim abstaining. Um, secretary. Jeff, you, you have any interest? Jeff, you're going to continue? Um, sure. Well, we, we do have a new, uh, we do have a new um, board member that is looking to get involved. So I don't know if maybe, maybe you want to pass it off or we want to have a wrestling match about it. I don't know. You interested in being secretary, John? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's just taking notes, right? Yep. Yep. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, sure. When would I start? <laughs> Do I start today? I can do it today. All right, man. Yeah, just so I can kind of get a sense of like kind of how you format it and stuff like that. But I'm happy to. Great. Who wants to, who wants so to they're pretty back? big shoes to fill. I think I did an excellent job during my time. Oh, phenomenal. <laughs> Are you trying to run me out, Tim? Is that oh, why you nominated no. someone else? Honestly, is that... Yeah, honestly, th this is this is a this is a full on fact. I am the secretary of the Cohasset Basketball Boosters, and I am at, always actively looking to give it up. So, <laughs> so I was trying to get you an out if you wanted yeah, it. it it, it feels like an initiation a little bit, so I'm happy to do it. So I do need a motion. So uh, moved. I move that John McMahon uh, be uh, nominated as uh, secretary. Second. Anyone? Second. Second. I'll do the Allison. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five, five zero. Um, I could turn this over to you, Jack, or we just – the minutes we still – I know Jeff – I still – Unfortunately, when I was, we quickly were kicked out of here in March, I threw everything in a box. I need to find the March minutes to type up, and Jeff's going to send me the May minutes. So we'll do that next meeting, uh, which I think we will have to have a meeting sometime this summer to approve a couple, like the um, funding for Millican and maybe for here. Uh, so summer discussion. Um, I don't see anybody here yet. I did send you guys some plans that we have forwarded to Board of Health. Um, we were hoping to go three two-week sessions to run some programs and just, you know, originally phase two guidelines because um, they're the stricter guidelines um, with the hope that phase three would happen soon. You know, I don't want to speak, you know, too much without, you know, the Board of Health here, but some of you guys are here. Well, they're obviously Quest is very strict with their policies um, and 
you know, the one thing they like to have me have is a nurse on staff. So we, I got lucky and our nurse from the last two summers did text me the day after and he's available the summer until like the first week of August. And when I was working the polls on Saturday, I did ask um, Kelly Gilday and, and Mrs. Crow if they're available for like a week. And Mrs. Crow's daughter works for us. So she said she'd make sure we have somebody if we really needed somebody, um, which you know, I appreciate it. So nurse wise, we're all set. We also would use an EMT. Dr. Schubert's son is an EMT basic. So we'd use him also. So we'd have the nurse at one site and, um, and Xander Schubert at another site. Then we'll also have three or four staff members who are still first aid certified. Thankfully, COVID extended the three, three more months to their certification because they got certified two years ago, just last month. So like Kate Daly and John Marr, there's a bunch of them that are still first aid certified through September. Um, their concerns obviously originally was that we were spread out in four different locations, uh, including Barnes for some baseball clinics. And um, even like we were going to do arts and crafts somewhere else. So we moved the two, as, as you see from those notes, if you had a chance to look at them, we moved everything to Bill Milliken. We had tennis to pickleball, lacrosse and baseball. We moved baseball off of Barnes over to Milliken. Plenty of room to spread out. Um, and then we obviously we do some high, middle school programming in front of the high school with Brett Humans who was also first aid certified. Um, and then we moved arts and crafts to Jay Hill, which would also include some court time. We wanted to do basketball or blacktop games and also some soccer or lacrosse, I forget where we, maybe lacrosse, I think of Deer Hill and soccer. They're looking. So we condensed our locations to two spots. And I think they just, the last time I spoke, I had a meeting with, last Tuesday I had a meeting with Pam Fahey, the health agent, very good when the nurse and Chief Sylvia and the protocols I sent you they thought was over the top which is which is good we I borrowed that from Hingham and just added some little league baseball language and some language for us so Pam was going to review the guidelines I think and like I told the second last night uh, two, last Tuesday phase two is not fun it's just drills over and over again and you know doing baseball where you're just throwing a baseball back and forth to each other. I think even the baseball kids are getting kind of bored of that. Uh, phase three has more, you can play games and you don't have to, you can share equipment. Um, the one joke we had was cornhole is the biggest thing for middle school kids, but every kid would have to have their own bean bags. You couldn't share bean bags. So when you play cornhole, you obviously stay on one side and go throw the other, but the kids would have to throw their bean bag, run to the other side and flip spaces and keep socially distant. Um, and, and if they're that close, they have to wear masks. Staff would have to wear a mask all summer, no matter what, phase two or phase three. So that's obviously a, not, a, not the best job to have in the middle of the sun, but we'd give them the, we'd give them the nice mask that they could breathe in, you know, out of. But um, so that's where we stand. You know, I think PAN's reviewing our guidelines. Um, one yeah, of the problems you, you had was restrooms. How long did you solve that? We were just going to go with one, one and a half hours. And if we did put in the protocols, like Little League Baseball did, plan, plan ahead. <laughs> I hate to say it, but, you know, go to the bathroom before you come. It's only an hour and a half. And then hopefully, you know, you, you can hold it for the, the hour and a half. Um, that was our plan, was just that, you know, we wouldn't want to use the schools. You can't use porta potties um, and like Little League Baseball does have in their guidelines that there are no restrooms available. Um, so that's why we kept it short. Um, I mean, that was one issue. I mean, and rain, and we don't want to go inside if it rains. You know, you're not, we're not supposed to, you can't, it, it gets too tight in the, you know, in the schools, you know, especially when we're at Milliken, you can't put everybody in a dugout. You know, you gotta, that's not, that was going to be our containment zone, the dugouts for if anyone's not feeling well. Um, we would have to check every child before they came in. No, no, no temperature check, but just to help. We have to maybe separate the programs a little by hours because they'd want Luke to look at every kid when they come in, um, make sure they're not showing any symptoms, and have a you know, have a thermometer available if if need be. Um, so we would have to move programs around. Time-wise, what I sent you today, we have to maybe change like 15 minutes here or there. 
to allow for um, the nurse to check every child. But we're going limited numbers. Phase two numbers are just um, 12, and that includes a staff person. Um, there are guidelines for them. They, they have to wear, they can't wear the same, they, have to, they can't wear the same shirt. They have to make sure they do their laundry every day. Um, so um, wear a mask every day and just they, they be with that one group of kids. So we do, two, we were thinking about doing five one week programs, but I'm gonna try to keep it within that 14 day confinement issue. So we can start, you know, we have a new group of kids coming in two weeks. Uh, we're back, now we're back in another week. So we're gonna start July 13th, if possible, and, and do four weeks of programming, which, you know, it, it does kill me because I think we're running the least amount of programs. I know you're the rector around, but. I think we have stronger protocols for from the Board of Health that, to follow. So, who knows what's going to happen to phase three? Yeah. Sorry about that. Supposedly, phase three might happen this weekend. Yeah, you know, we heard last night. I don't know if that's what that's going to you know going to happen to or so. But if you, if anyone has any questions about what I sent you guys this morning and what the Board of Health has in front of them right now. Um, let, let me know if you have any suggestions or thoughts. I just to go back to the bathrooms is there's got to be some sort of contingency plan that we come up with just I'm looking at the grades <laughs> so that we can help the counselors when it inevitably comes up. Well, we'd, we'd have Millican, we'd have for Millican at, or the front of the high school, we'd have the high school. Um, for Dare Hill, we'd, we'd prop a door open and just use okay. one bathroom. So we'd have the, for emergency, we wouldn't announce it. Right, right. Okay, cool. Uh, we, we'd actually request. I mean, the, Pat Sullivan's been great about if, if I need space to, you know, we could do it. But like I said, we're, we're dealing with some pretty strong regulations. Um, they, they look at it, they look at the town results and how we're doing well COVID wise, and they want to keep that up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of parents just want their kids to go back to school in the fall. So. Um, so that's pretty much what I have for summer. Um, we are do doing you have a yep. quick question. Do you, do you have any sense of uh, participation based on the offering and the timing? Do you think those numbers? I mean, if you look at those numbers and tally them up, there's over 100 spots, right? Well, actually, more than that. I think we have um, seven programs with 22 kids each. I have some work down in my house. I'm sorry. So we get about 150 spots open every every session. So I mean, that's a that's a pretty good number. We're gonna we're gonna drop the the four fives and six year olds and you know and go first through fourth, and then we're gonna drop the eighth grade group at the, at, the, at the high school just because just to help with the numbers. And plus, the eighth graders are usually very busy with sailing and. Just uh, anecdotally, have you had people tell you that they'd be interested, or not, is it a kind no, of a guess? I'm I'm. The, I'm going off other towns, and like uh, I talked to Hingham this morning, who started this week, and they use the same expression we use for um, another pro like the teen center. If they if you build up, they will come. Um, I mean, and there are parents out there that would you know for an hour and a half they take advantage of it. I don't think we turn people away. I don't think we um, max out, or I think we have enough to run either, and also so. Okay. Um, oh, what are you thinking? First come, first serve. Just. You know, like you say, you don't you don't expect it to max out, but what if, you know? What if there's like a, you know, just a groundswell of like, thank God. Yeah, you know? I, I think we, you know, it starts because the kids can separate. I mean, it's a great thing about we we actually want the kids to like you know, maybe pick baseball in the morning, one two week session, pick another sport in the other session. I mean, the great thing is that you know when we had six sessions, we everybody could do every sport or even arts and crafts. Um, we could expand arts and crafts a little bit if we see, a, you know, we could move that, you know, we could get more tables and, and hire more staff. We have the staff. So it's just a matter of, uh, and who knows, phase three might bump the numbers up for us, which I think they will. Yeah, of oh. kids, you mean spots. Spots, yep. yeah. Uh, this gives us the opportunity to open up more for phase three. So those are phase two guidelines, stricter guidelines. So like I said, phase three should open up more, you know, more kids. We're thinking 25 maybe. I hope so. Ted, I had asked you this question before. Explain about extreme because some parents were asking about that. Oh, so for refunds? Yes. So just so that you know, it was a, you know, I think I spoke to a couple of you guys. 
back in September, our website, MyRec, asked us to switch um, credit card processors because Nationwide was bought out by a major new company and it became just a small shallow of itself. So we did, I did ask the treasurer collector back in Labor Day to switch bank accounts. Um, just with some issues that worked, you know, some personal issues. I know she lost her, her brother, I think, in the end of the summer. So she got around to in December. We took the $82,000 in on January 9th and she switched banks two days later. So our credit card processor went from uh, nationwide to a total different company. And we can't, re you know, so the money went to one, off, one account. The money's all there in the town account, but we can't refund checks, credit cards back. So we're doing it all by hand. Um, so some of you might have seen it, um, saw the re refund receipt back to your account. We got them all done last week. It took about two weeks to process them all. And then our next step now is they've asked me to do a third step where we look up everybody, all 175 parents, and see if we've ever given them a refund in the last 10 years. And they've asked us to use that code number, the ID number for, you know, for everyone that, like Tim, I just did your, you know, we did your refund. We found your vendor number from a refund that we gave you for something. So we just, they've asked us to do that. So our goal is to finish that today, send everything to the town. Um, I did send an email to parents on Monday, you know, thanking them for their, you know, their patience. It was, and it could be even still a couple of weeks longer because as I told, I think you Jack this morning, when I give the, the accountant six refunds, she freaks out and yells at me. Now I'm gonna give her 175 refunds to do by hand. So it's, it, we did ask the, t the finance director to do it from who's paid the most. You know, so if someone paid us $1,000 for all weeks to start with them first and work their way down to the, the 150s that were just one week. But this new system we're doing now where we're entering all these vendor numbers for all these parents, for most of the parents, um, it should make that process quicker. It's the same process that the school department used to refund all the school fees just last month. So we're hoping that's a quicker process. And um, as I mentioned to a couple of you, I said, I, we known six weeks ago that Extreme was never gonna run uh, based on guidance that there was gonna be no field trips. And the, the rules on school buses is one child per row, every other row, and we have 98 kids per week or 96 we would have needed 15 school buses to go on a field trip if we had even could run. Um, so I wish we could have pulled the plug on Extreme back in May so we could have done this quicker, but I was asked to defer until the, the full announcement was made. So, um, but the checks will be going out, hopefully starting next week. I don't know if they're gonna do them in groups or be able to send them all at the same time. But I, I mentioned that in the email to parents on Monday. And the, po the comments came in very positive. I know Jeff, um, Brian Sasso called me Monday, so there's one negative comment on 143, but it was quickly removed. So I don't know where. <laughs> the 14 police caught it and removed it real quick. So, um, so that's where Extreme stands. No other, the only other money we need to return is for both safe voting, uh, which we could not do. Um, we found a space to run the class that could socially distance 30 or 40 people, but then the problem was the Coast Guard told the Coast Guard Auxiliary that nobody over the age of 65 could teach the class. And I don't know if any of you ever met Oscar, but I joke with Oscar, I said, well, you should be all set, but they told me he was 87 years old. <laughs> so so and then the rest of this crew was between 70 to 80. So we had to cancel our safe voting classes. And I, I joke with Lori on election day that this, the harbor's not gonna be a safe place with our 200 kids not certified to, to ride, you know, to drive boats this, this summer. So it could be a tricky one, but. Uh, we'll do more next, you know, we'll offer more classes next year, d double up to try to get more kids. We do about 200 kids in the safe boating classes over the five classes. So um, it's a little scary out in the harbor this summer with a lot of 12 year olds that didn't get licensed or taught how to drive a boat. Um, but that's pretty much it for summer. Um, I know we can talk about some of the projects now. Actually, I'll defer a little bit to Tim, but. Um, Tim, you want to talk about Sawyer Street? Oh, I'm going to mute you first there, Tim. I'm going to mute myself first. So where we stand now is, so we have the, the demolition, obviously is done, and now we've kind of uh, 
graded it. And what we're waiting on at the moment is light poles. And the there's a there was a um, there was an expectation on our part that the na uh, national grid was going to provide and install the uh, uh, two light poles uh, for us that we need. And um, they are. I, and I, I got this from talking to, so uh, the, the uh, fire chief is sort of the point person on this because he's got the connections at uh, National Grid from the various power outages over the years. So they've got kind of a, a decent rapport with, with, this, uh, with this particular group. And I guess there, there's some reluctance on their part to provide the um, polls because they don't want to be liable, for, you know, if they install a poll, you know, X feet from a from a uh, uh, you know the playground on one side and and a court that kids are going to be playing on the other side. They don't want to. Uh, they're conscious of liability about you know these treated wood wood treated poles or treated wood poles somehow leaked into something and caused something with with uh, children. And so they're a little skeptical of that. They don't really want to do it. So the way it stands now is DPW is going to get a hold of two poles. And National Grid is going to install the poles as, or, or the, the plan, um, and this was as of yesterday, the plan was that they would have um, a, a training program for their uh, pole installers. So basically say, like, let's go practice and put these poles in. Um, so that's, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a schedule on that. I don't know the, the, you know, the dates on any of this. Um, I, I'm you know, going to guess it's not going to be this week um, with the holiday. Uh, so if we're looking at starting next week, that that we need to put the lights in first, into um, so we can run uh, conduits from the um, electric box on the or the electric um, uh, not the box, but like the electric setup on the pole closest to the train tracks, and then run these wires to the two poles that we're going to install, and then basically essentially like light up the poles the um, electricians will come in, the electrician for the town will come in, light, light up those poles, put the boxes that we need for, um, for, for lighting lights and for plugging in um, scoreboards. So that's the, that step has to happen first before we can do any paving. Um, and then, uh, Jeff, I know you were saying there's people down there eyeballing it. One other thing that has come up is the grade of the uh, courts. So sloping from the parking lot down to the train tracks. Um, it's um, FIBA basketball and kind of like the standard says it should be 1% grade uh, over the length of the, uh, of the court. So this would be like, you know, what, 7.6 inches if we're going 76, you know, the, the grade of the entire length would be 7.6 inches. The, um, the engineer for the town was concerned about puddles and he actually had IREAs do a 2% grade. So if people are out there eyeballing it, you're going to see, I mean, it's, it's more than a foot drop from the parking lot to the, to the end. Um, so that's going to be corrected. That's going to be rectified before they pave. Um, we're going to go back to the 1%. We're going to kind of you know, regrade that. And then the um, paving can happen. Uh, once the paving's done, we can go with, uh, we're going to um, stripe it very minimally. It's just going to be like white lines uh, for this year. And then hopefully if we have funds and, and the weather cooperates, we're going to paint it, um, you know, nice, something nice. It won't just be an asphalt court. We'll paint it maybe Cohasset blue, um, you know, maybe put some, some sort of stenciling on there, um, you know, something to make it look nice. And so that's where we stand. We're waiting on the poles and it's going to be, you know, it's, it's kind of up to DPW to get the poles and then it's going to be scheduling with national grid when to put them in. Yeah, I think one thing is our budget. I mean, we were expecting to put aside probably 10,000 from this year's basketball, which obviously didn't happen. So we'll, we'll, we'll try, we'll start registration early next um, April uh, for summer basketball so we can get something done in early May so we can re be ready to go in June. And um, as I mentioned, Tim, we, National Grid does, I know the, the man, you know, the man, he gives us $500 for Thanksgiving, gives us $500 for the rec fair. And just last week, I found a $500 check in our mailbox for the rec fair. So if we do, I mean, I'd rather have DPW pay for it, uh, these two polls. But if we needed $500 to help with the polls, we have, you know, I would just use that check but instead of, because obviously we didn't have the fair. So we might as well put that check towards, towards good use. So and I think- Anybody have any questions of Tim? 
Tim, while you're up, uh, could you just give a quick update on 250th? I know that's not our baby. Just where we yeah, stand. so, and actually, I reached out to Cara Bianchi uh, today and had not, have not heard back from her, but I just wanted to confirm that um, their, their, their plans were still in place for um, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, for two, you know, 250 activities during Thanksgiving weekend. The, when I had last spoke, or when we had touched base on everything being canceled, she had said that the plan was they were gonna try to do, um, you know, a, a very much scaled down um, celebration, but it was gonna be that weekend. So, you know, sort of, sort of beginning Wednesday kind of through Sunday um of thanksgiving week and uh, i just wanted to confirm that with her and, and so the the issue that we would have or the the um role that i guess uh, record play is we we would be part of that in that we try to drive you know if there's going to be a, a big interest we probably try to drive uh, more people to the thanks for giving race to try to pump that up a little bit um and sort of make it like hey this is all part of the weekend you know the race you go to the game you have the hall of fame induction you've got the uh, one of the things they've been talking about previously was the um, the uh, a bearing of a time capsule. Um, so I again, I checked in with Kara today, haven't heard from her, but that's that was the plan. So Thank regarding, you. I mean, so Jack, I, I sent you the email about Millican Field. Um, so I don't know if J uh, Tim, you saw it, but they are, I forget the wording, I'm afraid to do this without losing it. Jack, do you have that email in front of you? Um, can you read it? Or let me, um, we tried here. So what happened was the email about Millican Field. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, on Millican, I am almost complete on the bid package of the building. Once complete, I'll reach out to the group of the final package. So that's quote unquote from Jason um, for the bid package. So and this ties in with Beecher basketball too, because you know Tim, I don't know if you notice how much. The backboard fit closest to, not closer to your house, but the far, farther one, you're starting to see some sitting, it's starting to sink there. Yeah. You know that. Um, so we are going to need to. Um, I mean, it'll be good for the you know, probably for the fall town meeting, put fifty a request in for fifty thousand dollars for Millican, and fifty thousand dollars for Beachwood because I really came back with a quarter thirty five, uh, for a reconstruction and they'll put new backboards up so. This this tall meeting will ask for close to a hundred thousand uh, dollars for a capital budget and CP, maybe one one of each, capital and CPC fifty thousand each, to finish Millican Field and to fix Beachwood for next for next year too, which would be great. We can actually, you get CPC money, we can use it in the fall. We can use it before the basketball season starts next summer. So we can have DK from Millican Ted is the is a budget shortfall to. We think so. I mean, we're okay. down to, because of all the money that was spent on engineering plans, which was close to $30,000 on plan that then was overbid. Um, they think it'll be, I, I think Tim, I think Jason mentioned it was, he was estimating 260, 270. Something like that was the number, yeah. And we're, we're about 200 right you know, anywhere around 200, uh, 210, I think. So, you know, once he gets his bid package in and it goes out to bid, maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be some low, I hate to say low bidders, but, um, we, once we get that in, we'll put a request in for capital budget and, for, and CPC for the to finish both those projects. Um, okay, thanks. And then, I don't know, Jack, do you want to... Yeah. Committee reports, uh, what committees are you talking about? Well, next, well, open space now. So we lost, Abigail was on open space. Is anybody interested? I mean, they did, uh, we can't actually have you, July 7th is our next meeting. Um, the good news is Jenna is the Zoom administrator, so she can sort of keep an, keep an eye on things for us. But um, we do need a, a member for open space. It has to be approved by the selectmen, so it actually isn't, once we make it, if somebody's interested. Um, I mean, it's, Don't all jump out at once. <laughs> I know, we, we lost Todd. Um, but um, and we don't have to, I mean, just something to think about. I can try to get the guidelines of what, what it, pertains. Oh, wait a minute. Todd just said he volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is background and he's not here. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we can throw it out there because um, it's Peter Pescador, if anyone knows him. Um, we don't have to do it. I mean, without, I'd hate to volunteer, Todd, but 
let's, let's, we can hold off on that. And it's, um, I can find out from Peter and Jenna what their plans are for the next ex upcoming year. Um, so I guess the next, Allison, do you want to give us a little update on Safe Harbor? But I will tell you one thing. I got an email from Nicole, a call from Nicole today. Nicole, in her last Safe Harbor meeting, you might know this, there's been a push to have um, have Safe Harbor, and of course she asked us um, to get more um, movies, outside movies done. So Nicole's doing the, the groundwork on it, but she just want, asked us if we wanted to um, help out in a way, and I told her we could, you know, whatever, get some of our staff working a little bit too. And um, I just, sorry to interject there, Allison, but that's something Nicole. No. I think it came up actually at maybe after the meeting because I was on the meeting and I didn't hear like doing like drive-in movie theater type thing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So Nicole is doing the groundwork on that and she asked if we want to be involved and I said sure. We, ne we never say no to anything. Yeah. So. I think because the meeting was held right after the town meeting yep. where they had just brought everything in. It seemed to work so smoothly. Of course, I know people work their tails off to, <laughs> to do it. Um, but that, really, I haven't heard much from Nicole and other than sitting in on that meeting where really they were wrapping up because they don't meet during the summer. So I don't have much to add. So I'm glad you did say that. Yeah. I guess the one thing too is that my question is why, you know, I was hoping the music circus would do it on their own. You know, you know, grab, see what other towns are doing and see, you know, have them run, run a movie theater by themselves, but I'm not too sure if they're interested in that. But, um, so Jeff, anything uh, you want to start? Is that that's not oh, is that owned by somebody in town? It's the general manager's from Coasset, Longo. So. Hmm. Okay. Anything from you, Jeff, on the harbor? So the harbor plan was approved by the board of selectmen on the twenty third of June, and that's kind of the. That's been a long time coming, but it's kind of the first step to starting to develop plans to address the different components of the harbor plan. So, you know, there's an infrastructure component, there's an environmental component. Um, and so the harbor committee is going to kind of break up, develop plans for those, and then look to do some grant funding for targeted projects that are part of the harbor plan. So kind of the plan was the linchpin to get the grants going. So that was a good, good first step. Um, so that's kind of where it's at at this point. I should probably ask you, Jeff, are you want, you want to stay on the Harbor, right? Harbor committee. Yeah, I'll stay on the Harbor committee. Yeah. Sometimes we, you know, we do reorganization, we reassign, but that's fine. Um, Tim, sorry, talked about 250. So the only thing else I have, and I know we're ahead of schedule here is the, um, as many of you know, we hopefully have seen that we are cleaning the playgrounds. We started cleaning the playgrounds about two weeks ago and, um, four times a day, I get 12 hours a day. We have um, kids, someone coming in at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. And they're going around. They start here at this playground, about 45 minutes. It takes to hit this one. Then they go up to oh, it's good Deer Hill. Not much of Deer Hill. It's a lot of wood up there. But um, then they come downtown. And as many as some of you might know, about two weeks ago, I was actually cleaning the Deer Hill playground because one of my staff members, we were shorthanded. And I realized we have these beautiful red tables that we're sitting behind the Deer Hill for our playground kids that are our red group, we call them, or the Breakfast Club. There's another nickname for them. And um, they were just going to sit there all year. So I sent a picture to Chris. Chris, he didn't respond, but next thing I know, they'll be moved to the common. Obviously, a big hit on Facebook. Um, everybody loves it. You know, that we didn't, we're not getting too much credit for it, but that's okay. But um, so our staff member goes to the playgrounds and they go down there and they wipe down all the tables. And I get reports of most of them that they're half the time they go down there to clean the tables, half the tables are being used 12 hours a day. So uh, they try to work around people. And we also, I realized that there was, there was talk about wipes and we started, some of you might know those, we bought about 20 spinning bikes from Hingham for a really little money. Um, a few years ago, we bought them downtown and we bought these wipe dispensers and wipes that we still have. So they installed those downtown so people could use a, it's not the sanitizing wipe, but it's a wipe. Uh, so those are down there too. Um, and then the, the, then the staff person goes to Beachwood and then they take a little break and do it all over again. Um, so we've been going strong now for 
almost two weeks, um, more than two weeks now. Um, I did ask the Chris Senior, Glenn Pratt, and the Chief if they wanted me to clean the playgrounds this weekend over the holiday weekend. So trying to get a day off maybe <laughs> so for the kids and for us. Um, but no, I think everyone, I think people are receptive to what we're doing and keeping some staff employed. Um, it's coming out of COVID money. So basically it's coming out of our account first, but then I'll send a bill to the town to reimburse our account for all the, all the cleaning of the playgrounds and the, and the benches. So we'll see how much, how, how, see how long that lasts. I'm, I'm sure when I send a bill, they might say, well, we'll cut back a little bit, but um, I think people appreciate it. The people when we're in there cleaning, you start seeing masks go back on. Like there was just a lot of people in there and nobody was wearing a mask until, they, until Bernie went in there with his mask on and you can see the, ma the mask pop up, you know, so. You know, at least we're, we're, being, we're giving a positive influence on the mask a little bit when the parents see us in there uh, with the mask on. But, um, but like I said, I think it's been a, it's a good, good PR move for us, um, keeping some staff employed. And uh, they love the red tables. And the Stuckman's meeting last week, they were talking about they should make it a permanent thing. But I told Chris, you don't keep it. And I talked to Tim. I said, they're not keep those tables are about $750, about $700 each. And we want, they're, they're coming back next summer. Uh, we need them. Um, and of course, I think the common historic dis district didn't like the red anyway. So um, they can buy their own, you know, starting next year, they can buy the tables themselves. So but if anyone has any questions or comments or that they heard any good stuff that- I have a question. Right? Uh, yep. that since Farmer's Market is starting up, are we at all considering like individual concerts, you know, rather than a group? Or are we definitely not going to do that this summer? We lost, the, we lost unfortunately, with the Muse Circus, they give us $5,000 every year. They're not giving any grant money this year. Um, okay. They might give it, they, I got to apply for it in the fall. But I have a funny feeling they're going to tell me that, you know, you can't use it, so apply in the spring. Because um, not to mention the fact, if I apply in the fall, that $5,000 might only be half of it. Um, so we need the 5000 to run the concert. So, um, yeah, I mean, actually, I think the farmer's market has any has somebody already, right? Are they going to still, I don't know if you know the, in, in, inside about that, they're still going to use that one guy? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I just wondered after whether, because you have a crowd there, I don't know whether yeah. we're considering anything, because people keep asking that, aren't you going to do something? And I said, no, we're not. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't you know, all my bands are more than one person, so they, you know, until, and concerts actually are, even though it's a on the common and wide space. I think concerts are phase four. Yeah. No, even though it's on the open end, so far, you know, type of thing. So, um, you know, I don't think we'll see phase four to Labor Day or maybe the end of this early August, I hope. So, I mean, the only thing also I have is that um, we are officially a go for the RISE program. So we're bringing back RISE. We're running it for the school department. I think I have to keep on reminding the superintendent that it's a school program. He's gonna, he has to announce it. Um, we're, we're going to be doing all the work. Um, you know, the, 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 jobs have been, the jobs have been posted uh, by the, the assistant superintendent. Um, I'll be working closely with her, but they'll be using our website. Uh, we'll be using, we won't have a classroom at all. We'll be just using the Osgood cafeteria in the mornings and the afternoons. And obviously there was concern that going back to school, we might be half the kids every day, but we just have to, we can make it work. You know, we'll just, use, we'll just, you know, have half the staff there. Um, and then once things are back to normal, you know, we have a full crew. It'll, it'll be great to have Kevin Dykus back to work, Brett Humans back to work. Um, you know, so we have the staff available. If, if the kids don't go back every other day or every other week, we'll just adjust our numbers. We can make it work. So it'd be good to get back in that program. So that's all I have. Any other questions? Allison, you want to bring cookies for all of us next time? <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> so, was it I'm so sorry. I was starving. That's okay. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I, 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 told Abigail, I told Abigail at the election she was going to make some virtual cookies for us. <laughs> okay, so because we're being videotaped, uh, I need a motion to adjourn. When you do say agree, would you say who's making the motion? Uh, your name, and so I need a motion. Motion to adjourn. Make the motion to adjourn. Allison. 
Okay, second? Second. Tim, all in favor? Signify by leaving. So we'll have to do individual ones, okay? John? Yep. Yes. Jeff? Yes. Allison, yes. Tim, yes. yes. Jack, yes. Ted, you don't get the vote. Yep. We lost twice. Okay. Inside left.